Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually, let's do that. What happened? Um, but um, oh. yeah, does that sound good? Does yep. Sound whatever. Good? Sweet. Sweet. So maybe if we could do it in a way where like he sits down and you just get right into the interview. Okay. Like, like I walk down. Like I walk in and just sit down. Yeah. Well, like you can just like start right here and then you just sit down. Okay. And just start talking. Listening to you talk so passionately uh, about jiu-jitsu and, and hearing you talk about you know, being obsessed with jiu-jitsu at such an early age, what do you think it is about jiu-jitsu that connected so well with you? Um, I really like math and problem solving. Every reaction the person gives me is a problem that I have to have an answer to. I feel like there's two types of people, math people and writing people. I never really liked writing because you have to come up with your own answer and there's no correct answer. He honestly, like, he wasn't this natural, like, oh, this kid is going to be amazing. It's, it's really interesting because people don't really notice it about him. He was that guy that everyone's like, oh, I don't, he's not going to do anything. Writing people uh, don't like one set answer. They can make any answer they want. Math people, they see a uh, problem and they just want to find one answer, you know? My kid's a perfectionist, you know? Uh, that's what I really like about him, you know? I have that mind, like, um, with jiu-jitsu. Any reaction is like a problem for me in math. And I gotta solve the problem. Problem solving, I love, you know? So it makes me obsessed. The way that he thinks is completely different than everyone else's. I'm very OCD, so um, like if there's a reaction that when I'm training and I feel like I can't, I don't have an answer to, I'll, it'll just drive me crazy, you know, and I'll be obsessed with trying to find an answer to that problem. So it's like a math problem. Mikey is such an unassuming looking guy. When he gets on the mat, he moves so quick. <laughs> Mikey, give him the thumbs up. And he got it. Oh, wow, that's it. Mikey Musumichi. History in the making. When you're feeding like that, it's much easier if you pin the arm, pin the arm and walk. Walk to the side, just walk. Just pin the arm, and yeah, no, but lift this up. Lift this up and, no, lift both. Both like, oh. And now, now walk, 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 walk. Look how easy it is, because she okay. cannot stop it. You yeah, understand? Because yeah. if you go like this, sometimes they straighten the arm and get out. So you turn sideways, right? And now look how I walk to the side. You oh, see? Oh, because I can't come in. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So now your leg is trapped. And now even if you lock the legs, and I, I can't break this, right? Now I just make sure that I don't get triangle here. Look, no, no, no. Keep it, okay. And then you lock, lock the legs over. Look, and your legs will unlock it. You understand? That's Really cool. He's having a uh, Kyo to help me. You know, I, I never, like, he's always supervising my training so much better when he's able to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he always does that on, like, uh, the phone, but, like, when I'm here, it's so much easier and better. Even, even if you don't have that, you don't, uh, just be careful with the triangle, okay? Okay. So keep this hand grabbing something. Oh, you're wearing the collar. No, before I was, but now you're gonna grab something. Yes, just not inside. Out, yes, exactly. Okay. And you yeah. can use your elbow to push still, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then now you turn your legs, just open your hips, open your hips. No, no, open your hips to turn your leg over my foot. Oh, here. Exactly, and now peel off my leg. Not for a foot lock, but peel off, yes. Like here. And you can use the other leg yeah, as no, well. Right uh-huh. And now it's The huge difference about Mikey and biggest majority of the people is that Mikey studies jujitsu every day. Mikey's very smart, like not even just in jiu-jitsu, even school-wise, like Mikey's really smart. Some people you have to go over and over and over and over and tell them, and then one day you hope they understand. With Mike, you plant ideas and he figures out himself. Imagine like you take someone like that, that you take someone from, let's say, the highest level of education, law school or medical school, someone of that like level of knowledge and expertise and like learning style, and you put them in a sport like this. 
With Mikey, it's, it's fun to, to teach and drill because I don't ever have to tell him, Mikey, do this. No, now you do exactly like this. Because I know that if I give him an idea, he will go around and eventually he will get exactly where I want him to be. He has a different approach where he's just so technical and that's from the way he thinks and the way he trains. And you're gonna say, but I know people that study jiu-jitsu every day. I know people that train jiu-jitsu every day. Today, everything went wrong. Mikey will still study jiu-jitsu. Whether it's Saturday, I'm talking to Mikey about jiu-jitsu. It's Sunday, I talk to Mike about jiu-jitsu. It is any day, good or bad, we talk about jiu-jitsu. When I became really obsessed is when I started watching Jiu Jitsu. One day in training, Shark was like, oh guys, check this out. It was a Nino Shambri highlight video. Like, you know, like all the cool Mapadas he did. And um, it had an Elvis music on it, it was really cool. And on the side of the video was a Marcel Garcia highlight video. He was my favorite person of all time, like watching Jiu Jitsu. And then all I wanted to do was whatever Marcel Garcia did. Arm drags, uh, X guard, butterfly guard, you know. I had like this big uh, English sheepdog stuffed animal in my room and he would like take it and start drilling on it to the point where it ripped off. And I'm not, I'm not making this up, I can't make this up. Like I'd watch a video on YouTube or like a any all the fights, and I would just try to like replicate positions on the stuffed animal. I think at that point he was doing like 50-50 stuff when I first came out, Baron Bolos. Like he would drill. He was like 11 years old drilling all this stuff on it. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, but like I was just so I was so excited to learn. I just wanted to keep learning. Then every day I'd go to the gym and I would ask Shark. I'd be like, "Teach me a new guard. I just want to learn every guard." My mind was like. I feel like a lot of people focus on like either winning or the social aspect. He focused on the technical aspect and it kind of brought him above everyone at a faster pace than normally it is. I feel like my body is like molded into Jiu Jitsu from so many years of doing it, you know. When I was brown belt, purple belt, me and my sister would drill in our garage in our house at like 4.30, 5 a.m. Mikey and I both are very different. He's like able to figure techniques out and watch a video and like dissect it. I was so motivated just to learn anything possible, you know. That drive I had, uh, you can't really teach that to people, you know. I evolve, but I evolve differently. I kind of just, I do things and it happens. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that happened. Both play a role. Like, he could go over to me and like, oh, well, what do you do in this position? I do something. He's like, oh, I didn't know that that exists. And I didn't know it existed either, but because he had me do it, we both realized it. I don't feel any pressure training with Mikey, which is weird. Like, I mean, I feel physical pressure, but like, I feel like he is so in control that he like trains at a pace that he knows that I could keep up with, like that, that it could give me good training and also he could get training out of it. He trains differently with me than like other people because I guess we have our history. He also like, he'll stop and show me things. Like he's, he's actually, it's very in nice training with him. Mikey, smile for the camera. Some people, everything came easy for. Like, I always felt like I was never like the most gifted one, but I, I'm always the hardest working person, you know? Mikey would go to Naga and he'd fight, I think, the 
60 pound division at this time so that I could put it into perspective how young he was. He would sign up for the 60 pound division and then he would also sign up for the 70 pound and the 80 pound division. After one match he'd run to another mat and do that match and then then it got to the point where the refs, the Naga refs were like they didn't like a kid so they're like oh Mikey let's see how fast you could sub this kid. It's like this doesn't seem that good but okay. <laughs> So I got my blue belt technically when I was like 13. <laughs> ATT had a belt test like for purple, brown, black. When I was like 13, I already knew everything on the black belt test. <laughs> I won blue belt juvenile one, blue belt juvenile two in 2013, and I got my purple belt in the full year. Year 2014, I won Purple Belt Worlds and I got my ground bomb on the podium. 2015 Worlds, I won Ground Belt Worlds and got my black belt on the podium. Every time I got the belt on the podium, I didn't celebrate at all. In my mind, I was like, Okay, now I gotta fight purple belt. Now I gotta fight brown belt. Now I gotta fight black belt. Time to go train. I didn't know if I could win black belt worlds yet though, because that was like, like too, like too much to think about, you know? I knew that I could fight the top guys and do well with them, but I, did, I couldn't see myself as a black belt world champion. In my mind, I was already thinking, okay, who's the best person in black belt that I have to fight and beat? So then I found where the best persons fight. It was Las Vegas, it, and it was American Nationals, you me, I was competing. I trained with him before, when I was a brown belt, like one time. So I knew what he felt like, you know. Still, it was you me, out. like I was super starstruck. And right before the fight, Guy Mendes came up to me. And he told me, it's the same thing as Brown, but like, you're this level, like, you deserve to beat here, and you could beat him, and you will beat him. I start to fight with him, and I almost take his back. I get one hook in with the Baron Bowl. At this time, they were like the only people doing Baron Bowl. So it was like, what? Like, someone's doing Baron Bowl on them, you know? Come on, Mike! I built him up in my mind so much before fighting him that every position he was going to do, I expected it to be so much worse than it was. Yeah! Everything was a blur. And then after the fight, my hand got raised and I was just in shock. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? I was just blue belt two years ago and now I'm fighting Zhuo Miao. Just a huge jump for me and it was so hard for me at first in black belt just to feel comfortable because of that. You know, I felt still like a kid and I felt like I should still be fighting like blue belt and purple belt, but I was in black belt, <laughs> you know? He gets up top, it should be a sweep. There's a knee bar attempt from Muzumeci. The first year of black belt, I would sometimes get to train, like in the morning, I would just wake up and just, okay, just do as many trainings as possible, then go die in school. I didn't get to compete a lot. My third tournament was Worlds, which was the biggest mistake ever. The biggest lesson was I felt so uncomfortable competing like so uncomfortable that I needed to get comfortable competing. We're gonna do two kind of training, okay? The later one, we're gonna do 10 minutes, but the first one, we're gonna do explosive training, okay? So we're gonna start with a group of three. Okay, okay I'm not gonna train with you the whole time, okay. yeah. but I'm gonna train with you. So we can start in the same group and then divide after, or we can start in different groups and then go together later. What do you prefer? Thank you. 
my first experience training with Mikey, uh, it was very important for me because um, I noticed that for him it was more important to learn than actually to win. And that was a great sign. The way we think is very similar, but the way we learn is a little bit different. Mikey understands the way that I learn and I understand the way that he learns. I think because we have this connection, you know, it, it made it a little bit easier that regardless if he's here or not, you know, our communication is so high that, you know, and he's so um, high detailed that even over the phone we can understand each other. I'm always sending him questions, asking him questions, and he's always helping me. And um, I really am grateful for him because um, he's not only a friend of mine, but he, he goes out of his way to help me when it doesn't necessarily benefit him. He's helped me improve so much with my jiu-jitsu. He's probably the most technical person I've trained with. I probably haven't met anyone so focused on learning jiu-jitsu yet. You know, like him, he is really focused on, you know, becoming better and evolving every single technique, you know, not just the new things, but every aspect of his game. You know, if you ask him about how he plays one thing today, next year he's going to be playing the, the same thing, completely different. He's going to add one or two details that he's going to be studying and evolving and and those two details was gonna make the position that he was already strong, so much stronger. I just kept getting better, like technique wise, where it didn't matter how my mind was, that I could just win fights. Asking what Mikey's goal was for the World Championship of 2017, trust me, it's not to, you know, play around, you know? It's to win. Before the match with Ari in the semifinal, I told him that would be his final. And I, I guaranteed him, if he won that fight, he could fight however he won in the finals and, and he would win. Very close fight. <laughs> right towards the, towards the end, he scored. Yes, yeah, so with no arms. He, he scored a two point double leg with no arms. And um, it was very little time left like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. But um, I stayed composed. And the second he got the point, I was like, in my mind, I was like, what the hell? And I heard um, his team celebrate. So in my mind, I got angry. I was like, there's no way I'm losing this fight for this. It blacked out at that point. And I just went to autopilot. And then I came back to consciousness and I was on top. And I saw the ref give me two points and I was on top of the sweep. Near close guard, I underhooked the leg. I went here. Here, when he tried underhooking my leg, I kicked his knee out and I swept him. And then when I swept him because he's underhooking, I took my leg out and I ended up in this spot. And I stayed here until the end of the match in the leg drive. So what happens with me is when I compete at like the Worlds, every time I do a good position, I black out. When I finished that fight, Kyle came up to me and said, you're gonna be a Black Bowl World Champion. Only a Black Bowl World Champion would be able to do what you did. I feel like my body, um, whenever I go on autopilot, I'm not hesitant. So my subconscious body takes over. 
And I'm way, you're way more technical in the subconscious and the conscious. Because when you're conscious, your timing's off for positions. But when you're in the subconscious, you have t perfect timing. You don't hesitate. Your body just does the movement. You're just trying to get your body to take over. Like for me, it doesn't even matter like what the score is. If I could get subconscious, I'm gonna get to the back or anything, you know, cause my body does the movement, not my brain. <laughs> when you drill over and over and over a move, like done a billion times, you know, so uh, I don't need to learn the move. I don't have to really think when I do the move, you know, I just have to get my mind to shut off. So it's a way of training. You have to train your mind in the conscious to get to the subconscious. So how I learn a move is I'll learn a move then I'll drill the move in the conscious. And then when I train, I'll do the move in the subconscious, right? So you learn a move and then your body will do the move in training, right? But when you do it in the subconscious, it's gonna be different than it was in the conscious, right? It's important to f if you could film training, it's really good because when you watch yourself do it in the subconscious, you learn a new move. And then you repeat in the conscious, oh, what did I just do there? Then you do it automatically, your body does it. And it's different than how you learned it because your body will do it automatically. And then you, learn from how you did it there, and then you go back to the conscious mind, and then you build more and more and more. So it's just constantly doing that over and over. That's how you get good at moves. I have not seen that at any other worlds. You know, if Mikey was heavier, if Mikey had more prestige, like had won other worlds before, this would have been like news for, for years and years to come. After that happened, like I really believed no one's gonna stop me from accomplishing my dream that I had since I was a little kid, you know? I was always a little starstruck fighting Juan, you know? This was the fifth fight. The four times before that, I beat him all four times, but always wars, like freaking crazy fights. It was a very strategic final. Not that we wanted it to be strategic, you know, but Mikey fought better. Again, uh, the, the calls were a little with the rules. We both double pulled again. And again, the same thing happened. The ref gave me an advantage for coming up when I was still in double pull. And then all of a sudden my mind blacks out. The same thing what happened with Ari, like I was, I shook my head in my mind like angry. And then I did it and then I just blacked out and my body took over. And then I come back to consciousness, I'm in a knee cut and Juwon's leg is on my chest, and I'm like, I'm in a knee cut, and then I look at Kyle, he's like, go, go. You know, the thing what people don't realize is that um, in that match with Juwon, you know, um, maybe the score was tight, but there was not a moment that Mikey was like, oh, he's going to lose. At every single second of the fight, I was like, Mikey will win, Mike will for sure win. Mikey won. When I fought Juan, everyone was booing me. I was like, why is everyone booing me? What did I do to them? It was traumatizing for me because I never was in a situation like that where I felt everyone wanted me to lose. And even people I was friends with, I saw them cheering against me, which was kind of messed up, but um, they all have their reasons. That was the first time, honestly, that Mikey was ever booed like that. I'm not a social, like super social person. So it's not like, it's not natural for me to be in an environment like that. They wanted Meow to win because the, there was the Meow Mania at the time, you know? I think I gave him the heart like this. I was like, I was like, why are you booing me? Uh, peace, like, uh, <laughs> I didn't understand why they disliked me. I felt per like it was personal to me. I didn't understand and I don't have to understand, you know? People have their reasons.
I got very depressed after winning the world the first time. I really kind of felt a lot of um, anger toward people. I felt very um, secluded. I didn't. I just wanted to um, not compete anymore. I almost quit jiu-jitsu after winning worlds. Mikey, Mikey, yeah. could, could you go back into the into armbar? What's what's your go-to defense for um, for like arm bars and stuff like that? Especially if, if a guy's deep in an arm bar, what's your go-to? Barrel ball. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here in the arm bar here. I try to get my hand to this leg here. Get my hip leg here. Now that I get the half guard, I could take my elbow out. Now that my elbow's out, I replace my hand. I go here, and I could under hurt the leg, or I could just go straight into barrel ball. When I say, I, I said it doesn't work. That's like, you guys know all about clickbait titles, right? Like, that's like to draw people in to get them to hear what I have to say about it. The Baron Bull is like, it's true, it's not a high percentage move. If you're a specialist in something, it's going to work. So I think people don't understand what I'm saying. Like, obviously the move can work. Especially if you're one of the guys who that's what you do is Baron Bull, that's your entire game. Of course it's, it can work. I, like, I'm basing it off statistic based. Like, if you look at all the people who win competitions, the majority of them play a specific style of game. So for overall, those are more high percentage styles. You don't see Baron Bull as much in the finals of divisions, except at with Mikey and the, like the specialists, obviously. Yes, it works. <laughs> Keenan made an exception to his rule. He said that I'm on the exception. So, so it works for me. <laughs> I think people like to get like attention with social media, talking crap about a position. I think that people that have trouble with it just don't have the answers to the reactions. Like every position, you know? It was 2010, I believe, I started doing Baron Bola. It just was so perfect for me because I was very flexible and inverting, and it's a position that you could do with guys bigger than you. Mikey has proven over and over and over, you know? And even Keenan says that, besides Mikey, you know, Baron Bola, but that's not true because if Mikey can do it, then anyone can do it. He's talking about being a specialist on something, but that's in anything. I think it's the most efficient move. Like for me and a lot of high level people, Tommy Langinker, Espin, Levi, like a lot of those guys, I was doing basic burn roll in world black belt finals, you know. It's not just a move, it's a position that you have to learn everything around it. And it does take a long time to learn, so I agree with Keenan that it does, it's a move that you can't just be instantly good at in this era of time because everyone's higher level with passing. Baron Bolo, what I love about it is you don't have to be stronger than the person. You can be weaker than the person and do it. A lot of positions require you to be stronger than the person. I have to make my game based on, okay, this guy's too strong. I'm gonna have to make, I have to make my jiu-jitsu around that, you know? I had like trauma from worlds, like how, um, like the crowd and everything, like it was, it was hard for me to learn how to deal with that, you know. Uh, some people are more, like it's easier for, I guess. For me, it was hard. I became very religious after that. I started going to church and I started really finding God. Mikey realized things that, that most people don't. Of course, the jiu-jitsu has a competitive part of, about it, you know, but it also has a part about it that you learn, that once you tap, it, it starts over. Just like in life, you know? You don't tap and die. 
what I did was I said, okay, if I'm gonna train, I'm gonna train and have fun. And then when I found my passion again, I was like 12 year old Mikey again. It's all excited to learn, all excited to train. In the higher level, it's all reaction based and it's all concepts and it's all thinking a different way, you know. Coaching him makes it really fun because he truly listens and he truly does, you know. It was just a whole different me, you know, I was having fun. I didn't really care about anything. I just wanted to do, dominate. I just wanted to show my Jiu Jitsu. When I realized that and I stopped trying to force positions and I stopped trying to just explode, my jiu-jitsu grew to another level. The night before Worlds, I had a dream that I won Worlds. And um, I remember messaging Hinata, oh, I just had this amazing dream. And then I had the best day, you know. Every fight ended in a submission. Either I submitted the person or I had the submission and the fight ended when I had the submission. I just didn't care about anything anymore. Who's gonna take it from me? Who's gonna do this? I just wanted to finish the fight, you know. Mike is so focused. That, that impressed me much more than anything competing-wise. You know, if Mikey puts something on his head, you know, he, he will do it. Every time I win matches, I don't get more confident. I just get more of a drive because I show myself what I can do. Mikey Musumichi is really on another level and he would be the first American to ever repeat as world champion. when I fought Ari in the world's finals before the fight. So the world's before that I fought Juan and everyone was booing me. This year when I was going into the fight, I saw the autos people like cheering. And I just kept saying to myself, God is with me. It doesn't matter who's cheering you. It doesn't matter who's booing you. You could scream anything you want, but I'm, I'm fighting and I'm by myself out there. Like God is with me and that's all that matters. When I was fighting, I wasn't in the fight. I was in the stands watching the fight. For some reason, I was like out of body experience. You know, I never felt that before either. So I was like in the stands, like sitting in the stands with like people, and I was watching the fight from the outside. I was watching myself fight Ari. What happened was my mind went black in the fight. I went to the subconscious, and I came back to consciousness, and I was on the back. He had time to end the match, you know, had more than enough time to end the match. But I think he was just uh, so surprised nobody was booing him and, uh, you know, I think he got time to enjoy the match. I didn't want to submit him. I just wanted to enjoy the moment of Worlds with the crowd. That was like the coolest experience ever probably in my life. That adrenaline, that nervousness went away. And he's like lost. You can see that he's wandering around. He's like, where did he go? I can do whatever I want, really? So he just wanted to enjoy that moment, you know? This year, everyone cheered me when I fought, you know? So it was a really cool experience this year. It was the opposite of the year before. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Mikey, just real quick. Can you tell me what it feels like to make history as an American? It feels fake. It feels unreal. Can you tell me about so the matches? It was a tough match there, but today, like today, a lot of people said, "Oh, I fight just for strategy and advantages." Today, I came to fight. First fight yesterday, I finished the fight. The next fight, I submitted from the back today. Then my next fight, I got I got stuck in a Oma Plata going for a submission. And then today, I went for the back and tried to finish. So I really tried to fight this time and not just fight for strategy and advantages. And I think I showed it today. I worked hard, and the results paid off. Congratulations, Thank you Mikey. so much, sir. I'm motivated. I've been training so much. I've improved so much, you know, since last year. Again, like my improvement's been ridiculous from everywhere. I'm way more well-rounded now. Like um, I'm super excited to um, compete again and they show my jiu-jitsu. I think that's about all the questions. Perfect. Is, is there anything else that we didn't cover, you think, that, that you want to talk about? No, that was good. <laughs> it was pretty comprehensive. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much everything, right? We did all the years and everything. Great. Um, Perfect. I was wrong. If you fought 30%, you <laughs> <laughs> You fought 25, maybe. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, I told you. I told you. I told you. Look, look. You, you never fucking made the mistake of getting taken down. You bought fucking taken down. You still won. I did. I still did the perfect game. How, how perfect was it? We, we did the training of, of going out and everything. Fucking amazing, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mate. I'll also need to find a switch good, okay? So we did it! Yeah. I'm in shock, Kyle. My mind no was rest, horrible okay? this morning. Don't look, look, turn off your fucking phone. Don't look don't look at any. We messages. hang out, we hang out. Yes. Zero messages. Airplane mode now. Uh, Mikey played the, 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 the perfect thing. We trained some of this stuff at the gym, not, not for Bruno, but for some of the guys, you know, and he ended up doing this, you know, which is so awesome because, you know, he did it just like in training. Well, was it extra special for you? Because, of course, you and Bruno have a long history. No, I don't have... If, if you beat Bruno um, or if you beat, like, one of the best guys in the world at a, uh, but I never fought the guy, would not make any difference to me. You know, I, I don't cheer against Bruno because I have a history against him. And I don't cheer in favor because he's not from my team, you know? But uh, uh, I, I'm just so happy for Mikey because he's building his legacy, you know? Me, Bruno, you know, we're 33 years old, you know, we're about to be done with this, you know? And Mikey just starting, you know? So I'm really happy to him because he still got the opportunity of fighting Bruno before Bruno fully retires, you know? So uh, I think he's building his legacy amazingly and by the time he's done, like, Everyone in Jiu-Jitsu will know him. The true final was now, of course, nothing against whoever is going to fight him on the finals. But, you know, uh, the, the division last year was Bruno's, you know. And uh, this year is going to be Mikey's. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Thank you so much. Mikey, man. You look awesome out there, Thank dude. you, sir. Congrats. All right, guys, I'll let you get back to it.
No, 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 nothing. Keep on holding this leaf. Keep on holding this leaf, Demi. Get the Kimura, Demi. Get the Kimura. Get the Kimura. You're winning, Demi. You're winning. Nothing. Nothing. You won, Demi. You won, Demi. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Gonna give me a heart attack here. <laughs> and the champion, representing Brasov, in here, Tammy Wilsonucci. Do you mind if I ask you, how does it feel to be a world champion? You know what? Honestly, I'll be 100% honest. I did. I, ha I knew what to give my hardest today for Mikey. Like, I honestly, this one is for Mikey. 100%. Why? Because he just helped me with everything, and like, he always wanted me to win this tournament. And, I just, this time I really gave it all I had just to win this for him, uh, Mikey ha ha has to win uh, later today, but if, if, if he does win, I believe you guys become the first uh, si sibling, brother, sister yeah. to ever win the world championship. And American. And American. What would that mean to you? This is why I had to win today, because for him, like, he's been wanting to do this for years. Since he got his black belt, he wanted this to happen, so I had to make it happen. He's going to make it happen today. My expectations for Mikey is that he will perform better than 2017 and 2018. Honestly, I have highest expectations for him, always. Yes, I want him to win and I expect him to win, but I just want him to be happy, honestly. Perfect! Mikey, do it! Come on! fake to me because I really worked my butt off to make this weight division. I was willing to die to make weight this time I, and I was able to do it because it was a dream of mine to win two categories and everyone that was talking crap yesterday about how I look dead, I was dead. But I came back today and I fought. <laughs> hey, hold up the three. There you go. Congrats, man. You saw them? Yeah. I'll say it right now as a blanket statement, Mike, you could win any weight class he wants to do. He's that good. Every time I win matches, I don't get more confident. You did it! Yeah, I told you! I told you! I build in my mind another goal, and then another goal. I never feel content with what I do. It definitely makes you more successful, that type of mindset. Never content and just keep going, next goal, next goal. My key is the future. People don't realize that Mike is 22 years old. He hasn't reached not even half of his potential. Mikey will be one of the greatest jiu-jitsu competitors of all time.